Hello, this is Justin Seven with SportsbookReview.com. I was reading in the Handicapper Think Tank, and there was a fascinating discussion going on about BTCL, or beating the closing line, started by Poker Joe. Now, Poker Joe first attributed me to coming up with this concept, but I wasn't the one who did. It was actually Henry from Pinnacle who told me to write about it about six years ago and explained it to me. Now, there's been a lot of uh, misconceptions in this thread, so I wanted to talk about beating the closing line and why it matters. So first I want to start with an example of a coin flip. Say a bookmaker puts up odds on the opening coin flip for a game. Heads are at plus 140, tails are at minus 160. Now you research it, you look at past results for heads and tails, you try to come up with the best model you can to predict what is the P of heads, what are the odds of getting heads. And not surprisingly, after all your research, you determine you think your P is 50%, that the fair price should be plus 100. So after studying and concluding that this plus 140 is a good bet, you bet it. You bet heads at plus 140, and not surprisingly, some other wise guys who did the same analysis, you also see that betting heads at plus 140 when they think it's a 50-50 proposition is good. So people bet heads at 140 and the price drops to 130, they keep betting it, it goes to 120, 110, uh, maybe it goes all the way down to 100, but let's assume it stops at plus 105. There aren't people hungry enough to bet it at plus 105 unless they're sure it's 50% and there's, if you've played Madden football, you know that maybe heads isn't a great bet. Now in this case, if you bet it at plus 140 and it closed all the way down at plus 100, uh, you beat the closing line by 40 cents. And any bookmaker who looked at your wagering history he would, and saw that you beat that game by 40 cents, he would say, that was a smart bet. And if you looked at your whole history, he would say, those were smart bets. Now, there's a couple different reasons why it could be a smart bet. Tricks Tricks suggests that this is a smart bet because you could scalp it out. I bet plus 140, I could then take the other side at minus 120 and guarantee a small profit. Now, while you can do that, you're leaving a lot of money on the table if you do that. Consider a game where the Yankees open up as a minus 140 favorite over the Phillies who are plus 130. And over the course of you know two days before the game starts, it closes at Yankees minus 115 and Phillies plus 105. The opening price, if you're betting the Phillies plus 130, you need to win your bet about 43.4%. Now, if a modeler looked at this and says, you know, I think the Yankees are going to, or, you know, the Yankees aren't as good as this line suggests. I think the Phillies will win more than 43.4%. Then his P would suggest betting on the Phillies. And if his P were very good and he wins long term, his bankroll accumulates and he bets more and more and more. So what happens is you have these, these there's two classes of citizens in the sports betting world. Those with the good models and everyone else. The people with the good models they are better at estimating the P than other people. They win you know, slowly but surely, their bankroll grows, it accumulates, and as they win and bet more and more, they become a bigger and bigger influence on the market. Much like you know, Warren Buffett has a major impact and the other trading houses. When they have an opinion on something, they can move the market and buy it until they think it's no longer a value. It's the same way for the professional sports bettors. If they see Phillies at plus 130 and they think it should be closer to you know, plus 110, uh, they'll bet it until it's down to one, you know, plus 115. Now this whole idea of beating the closing line only matters if you are dealing with a, a pretty efficient market in sports betting. So a question that you know, Shauner challenges is whether or not the sports betting markets are efficient. And there's actually a pretty easy way to test for that. And that is you say, you look, you know, pick any sport you want. Look at the opening lines and the closing lines. And look at the way the line moves. So consider the Phillies-Yankees game. If you had the opportunity to bet the Phillies plus 130 and the market closed at plus 105, one sample of this test would be, how did you do betting the Phillies at plus 130? Now, if you test this over thousands of games and you're always betting the, call it the right side, you know, based on which way the line moves. The question is, are you going to win or lose money? And generally, if you only bet openers that move substantially on the, you know, between open and close, you'll find that you actually would win a lot of money. And that supports the idea that the closing price is more accurate than the open, and therefore you have efficient markets. 
Now, there's lots of ways to beat TCL, beat the closing line. You know, you can chase steam, you can pick off rogue numbers, uh, but the, I think the easiest way to do is to develop a very good model. If you develop a good model and you're better than the openers, you're going to win money. Now, once you understand the value of studying line movements, you can use this as an additional tool to evaluate models. Now, most players, they just when they're looking at a handicapper or a service or their own model, they just say, well, what's the win-loss record? You know, ooh, 60% on 100 plays, yay, or, or whatever. Uh, but looking at the line movements, you know, are you beating the closing line? That's actually a much more powerful predictor than actual win-loss record. So if you're testing a model, you don't just want to say, well, how many wins and losses did you have in your selected plays? But you want to say, at the time I bet them, how many of them moved in my direction? How many times did the market say, yes, we agree with this play, or how many versus how many times did it not move at all, or how many times did the market tell you to go to hell and move the other way? That's all for this week. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, justin at sportsbookreview.com.